I thought I would start with work that I made around 94 to 98 when I was at Central St. Martins. And I had this idea that once I was on the painting course that I would paint without paint. And there were a number of reasons I wanted to do this. One of which was that we were going through a digital and communications revolution. So the internet and mobile phone technology was just coming available. So the work that you see here is made from shredded star charts. And that was also partly inspired by a book that I was reading at the time called Neuromancer by William Gibson. He's a science fiction writer who coined the term cyberspace. And so the protagonist at the beginning of the book looks up into the sky and it's the color of what he describes as a tuned out dead channel. And I really like this idea, or I found this idea to be really compelling as a way of describing how information had completely saturated our world. And so this notion of a digital space that literally flows through us during an era in which there was this sort of utopic feeling that all this technology was going to enable a better world in which borders and boundaries were going to come down or blur. And this then um, was extended into work using world maps. And to me, they, they kind of, at the same time, also sidestepped the dominant discourse of the death of painting uh, that was quite prevalent at art school while I was on the course. So for me, I was substituting the paintbrush for technology and the pigment for information. And as the language that I was developing um, went on, I started using different processes involving color photocopying machines. So in this piece, uh, there is, again, no paint. But what I do is that I photo collage uh, images of circuit boards. And then at the photocopying machine, while it's being scanned, I will uh, move it. And in that way, you create a kind of smeared mark of, uh, in this case, circuit boards. And then I will cut those up individually into uh, brush strokes and collage them down, varnish over them. And so to me, they were a kind of simulated painting, a virtual painting, if you like. And it's all these sort of different technological layers that I was becoming interested in as a way of uh, adapting what I felt was new ways of perceiving our realities through the technologies uh, that surrounded us. And eventually, over time, and when I was by now going into uh, studying at the Royal College, uh, I started reducing things, trying to get to um, what I felt were the core reasons of um, why I was making uh, these uh, works. And so color started to, to, to drain out. And so black and white photocopiers uh, were used to create these uh, abstract uh, paintings. And eventually it led me to using just the stock listings of the Financial Times as this uh, symbol and metaphor of uh, the information space that we we are in. And um, because it, just after this sort of utopic euphoria, we then had the tech stock crash. And, and that was just before the millennium bug. Uh, when we entered the new millennium, 
not so much with celebration, but more kind of almost cowering for fear that our computers were literally going to blow up in front of us and that airplanes were going to drop out of the sky unless we downloaded this security patch that would somehow uh, stop this all from happening. And, of course, in 2001, there were more natural disasters recorded than at any other time. And also the collapse of uh, one of the first too big to fail sort of companies, which was, uh, I think, WorldCom and Enron. Uh, but this obviously got completely overshadowed by the 2001 Twin Tower attacks and uh, the ensuing war on terror. And all of this was leading up uh, or to uh, the the financial crisis in 2008. So there was kind of these sorts of waves of apocalypse. And I was kind of interested in somehow capturing these histories uh, into, into my work. Um, so when I went on a residency uh, in Pakistan through a recommendation by a, a gallery in London, uh, I ended up in Karachi and I saw these incredible uh, decorated trucks and that became a kind of catalyst for me to suddenly open the floodgates to allowing figuration and paint back into my work. And so what do you see here, a painting called Spectral Eruptions, kind of is a convergence of... Uh, opening myself up to using different types of techniques uh, such as the spray painting that you see, uh, the uh, photo collaging of uh, significant landscapes. In this case, it was uh, of the Nevada desert where most nuclear testing of the atomic bomb uh, took place. So I was fascinated by this idea that the landscape was literally fused by this doomsday weapon. And then I was also becoming interested in ideas of mirages, of seeing things that aren't necessarily there. Um, and in a way, I was thinking about this information space or this sort of stock market uh, at a, on a global scale as this huge artificial space, a kind of dream space uh, where you see things that aren't necessarily there and so I was sort of bringing together these what I felt were kind of archetypes um, to to somehow reflect on these new spaces that we found ourselves in these types of spaces in which time and space have collapsed into the instant reconfiguring our perceptions of those spaces into a state of constant flux. And architecture started featuring a lot more in my work. Um, partly partly because of the, the Twin Tower attacks. I mean, it was a, a, such a, a, a horrifying uh, moment. And also one that felt like as though it was almost like something you you only hear of in mythologies or or like some sort of biblical event or something you know it's it's so seismic in its scale and the fact that there were financial centers that collapsed it was some it was it was so unreal um uh, to experience and so they 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 just started featuring in my work, but also I was drawn to utopic architecture. So in this case, it's the Le Corbusier's unity and how utopic ideas don't necessarily work as well. Um, so I'm always interested in these oscillating experiences of utopia and dystopia. And they all feed back into this notion of this information space that we find ourselves in, uh, where trillions are moving in an instant, and where they concentrate, you know, they define utopias or dystopias. <laughs>
Well, in a way, the paintings aren't just paintings. I just call them paintings because it's easier to call them that. <laughs> but they're actually, you know, photo collage, digitally manipulated images with some paint on it. My paintings in general, they begin with, uh, I used to stop listing sort of Financial Times for me as a metaphor of the information space that we exist in. These are coated in multiple layers, ending with a special type of varnish that allows me to print directly onto them. The images are constructed on the computer first, and then they're printed onto gridded sections of these pre-prepared sheets of stock listings. Then they're jigsawed back onto the canvas. Then I paint and spray paint ink. I put sand on it and I, I'll spray it from different directions. So there's all these different multiple layers of um, processes and techniques that I'm interested in. So then I'm trying to encourage, I suppose, a breaking down of the, of the paintings themselves into these multiple dimensions. So I've always been interested in new technologies as a way of expanding painting or the language of painting itself as well. And then just recently I've been able to make uh, a different strain of work that is just, just digitally based. I suppose it's. But then the images that I originally use are photographs of oil paintings that are then sort of run through an open source algorithm that glitches the original around 4,000 times. And what I mean by glitch in this case is uh, something called pixel sorting, which essentially takes every single pixel from the image and rearranges it according to an algorithm. What drew me to it was that they, they start to look like almost like digital sands of time. It's got this um, quite compelling sort of draining and entropy you know, to, to, to the image that to me is a metaphor also of the transition from one era to another. The show that I'm planning for Nottingham will involve a video installation and uh, a series of paintings, mostly new work, about, in a way, mapping the beginning of modern capitalism, or birth of modern capitalism, all the way through to authoritarian capitalism uh, with the rise of China. Here Be Dragons comes from a phrase to do with defining an area of a map that's unexplored or unknown rather than just saying unknown, they say here be dragons. But in modern sort of uh, times, it's also come to represent a place in computational coding for very complex areas that coders will define as being here be dragons as a warning. This is now an area that's maybe gonna be very complicated to, to look at. And also dragons being related to China, but also in the West to represent uh, an evil serpent. So it has all these connotations that I felt was very pertinent to what part of the show is also about, which is the new geopolitical lines being drawn in South China Sea, which is what my most recent paintings will be sort of dealing with. These shapes at the bottom uh, are actually contested islands in South China Sea. So I think this one is a mischief reef. You can see that it's got this unnatural sort of shape uh, to it. It's because they literally dredge up the coral and then they concrete over it. And China's creating these uh, artificial islands in the South China Sea. Now the reason why they're doing this is in order to extend their sea territory, as well as to protect the maritime sea, uh, sea route, which is worth three to nine trillion dollars a year and it's in response to the US opening up military bases to contain China. And um, so it's, it's about drawing up these new geopolitical lines uh, around these sort of contested islands. Uh, and so Here Be Dragons is a way of sort of uh, encapsulating all of those ideas.